Good morning, hello everybody. It's uh, November and it's the 14th uh, today and uh, I'm just going to respond to lots of questions that have been sent in to me. Uh, plus, uh, people have been asking for copies of uh, my book, My Dalek Has a Puncture. Uh, you can get them from uh, Fantastic Books Publishing online. Uh, and also my second book, My Dalek as Another Puncture, uh, will be published and uh, available uh, from mid-December, hopefully. Uh, let's go straight to it. I've got four quite interesting uh, questions this time round. First, Rhys in Bangor. Hello, Rhys in Bangor. He says, recently I was uh, referred to as a recalcitrant and I didn't really know what it means. Do you know? <laughs> well... From what I recall, recalcitrant means uh, it, it refers to somebody who's a bit obstinate, you know, and unhelpful. In fact, I recall I was called that when I was at school one time, and uh, and uh, I responded that I wasn't recalcitrant. I was perhaps a little reticent, and reticent means uh, I'm not always happy. Uh, giving my actual thoughts on a certain situation at the time. Yes, so that's recalcitrant. I hope that helps you out, Rhys. Uh, and secondly, John. John from Stevenage. Hello, John. Uh, he says his daughter passed her driving test in July, uh, and because she's under 25, was encouraged to have a black box, which meant her insurance uh, reduced tremendously. But she found within a day the black box was faulty. It was recording journeys she hadn't taken. It was saying she was travelling at certain speeds, which she wasn't. Uh, and uh, and she tried to contact the insurance company, who were very unhelpful, uh, saying that uh, they had to do everything by email. Uh, and then the insurance company were not responding to emails, didn't know what to do, so contacted their claims line. So at least I was able to speak to somebody. That's what John says. Uh, they admitted that the calibration of the black box is not guaranteed. They also admitted that uh, their system can't correct errors. Uh, but insisted that if uh, he wanted an engineer to come out, they'd have to pay £150. Right? And also, uh, uh, they would probably cancel the insurance policy, charging a £200 admin fee. Yes, I understand every expletive that is coming from you there, John. Yes, I've heard, to be honest, I've heard this before, and a couple of friends of mine, uh, younger friends of mine have had similar situations. Uh, the insurance company just insists that the black box must be correct. But at the same time, they do uh, admit that uh, the uh, calibration can't be guaranteed. So why should you be penalised? Uh, and so John is asking what you should do. Well, what I will say, if they're not responding to emails, what you do is you write to them referring to a conversation that you have had on the telephone and make clear all the points in the email. So you will say that you have been told that the calibration isn't guaranteed, that the system doesn't allow errors to be corrected, uh, that they will um, uh, charge an exorbitant amount of money uh, to cancel an insurance policy. You send it to them and I would say if you don't hear anything or get a refund uh, by um, a certain date you will take things further. I'm absolutely certain the insurance ombudsman will be very interested uh, for example. So you do this, you've got proof that you try to do something and if you don't hear anything go to the insurance ombudsman. Right, what have we got here? Willow. Uh, Willow from Manchester uh, brought a fridge last year and it broke down, stopped working two days after the warranty. Oh, haven't we all been there? It's as if the warranty sends out a signal to your, uh, to your fridge or your freezer or whatever and says, die. Yes, we've all been there. Um, she says, what can I do? 
I think you will come up, uh, you know, some dealers will just say, well, the warranty's expired, um, nothing we can do. Uh, what I will say, there used to be uh, what it, uh, trading standards, and I think that term was changed to something like, uh, oh, I can't remember, the Sales Act or something like that. I think through that you can, at a certain point, argue that despite the warranty expiring, you would expect the goods you purchased to last longer than 12 months. Uh, and I think that's a fair argument. And if you went to court, you'd do quite well. So I would try that route. It's a damn pain, particularly fridges and freezers where uh, food is at uh, stake. But uh, good luck with that. And finally, Jenny from Carlisle. What do you think of the story that Costa Coffee didn't give poppy sellers hot drinks? Yeah, I must admit I read this and I I was a little puzzled. Um, you know, this time of year in particular, we all buy our poppy and we all sort of do our remembrance and try and do good things. The poppy sellers, the particularly this year, have had to stand out in uh, particularly bitter weather and uh, a hot drink would be nice. Um, I don't know, should Costa Coffee um, give, them, give them one or not? I would have. If I worked at Costa, I would have let them have a free drink. But I also, it takes me back to the days of my Boy Scouts that when we went and uh, did remembrance popping sellings and whatever, we went, um, we travelled with a flask of hot tea uh, and some sandwiches to keep us going. So maybe um, that is what should happen, really. I know it seems rather churlish, but if I was going out selling poppies, I would take myself a flask of hot drink and perhaps a little stool to sit on and just look after myself. After all, these outlets do give you the space to do that. But particularly you know, on Remembrance Time, I think some of these stores, when they can well afford it, uh, can offer um, hot beverages uh, to uh, those selling poppies. Right, I think I shall call it a day. Uh, but um, thank you all for your questions. Do subscribe uh, to my channel and um, please keep on sending them in. And I'll see if I can help you or just witter on until the till December's vlog. Bye.